right, guys, this is Armageddon. We're going to show you the proof that we are in Joel chapter 2. This is Armageddon. Glory to his name. What exciting times to be alive. Okay. First off, we want to demonstrate to you, we've done this a previous video. It was two and a half years ago where we knew war and desolations were determined. And we were led by the Most High that there was a significance between the cup and the bomb. Why? You see the same colors that are on this cup are on this bomb. And we are led to the understanding that the cup is the cup of his indignation. When a cup of his indignation is poured out, it means the sword. It means bombs. Okay? So what it says in Jeremiah, it says, Cause them to drink the wine in the cup. Okay? Cause the nations to drink the wine and they shall be drunken. Now we knew they will be drunken. Okay? Because it lists the actual nations and these are the ones that are um, the Islamic nations going to war against Israel. So what was our trigger event? We knew something was going to happen. The nations would be drunk. It was the hospital. The hospital event has caused the nations to be angry and to drink. Now we also showed you that the cup is a um, offering. It is a libation when the, when the wine is poured out. Okay, the wine is poured out. And this is the cup of his indignation that he is pouring out and it's causing the nations to be drunk. Okay? This is what it says. Jeremiah um, 25 verse 15. Thus says the Lord God of Israel unto me, take the wine cup of his fury in your hand and cause the nations to whom I send you to drink it. They will drink it and be moved and they'll be mad because of the sword. They will be mad and drunk and go to war. Now this repeats, okay, once it lists the nations, it lists 24 nations that are essentially the nations, uh, the Islamic nations looking to go to war against Israel. And it shall be that if they refuse to take the cup in your hand to drink, then you shall say to them, thus says the Lord God, you shall certainly drink and this is all nations, not just the Islamic nations. You shall certainly drink, for lo, I bring evil upon the city which is called by my name. And there should be, shall it be utterly, utterly unpunished? You shall not be unpunished, for I will call a sword from the inhabitants of the land. So we showed you in the previous video that the, I was led by the Most High, that he gave me these two articles, and they have the same exact colors, meaning that when the cup of the wine is poured out that it would bring bombs. So this is a, I didn't paint this, uh, I found it here. And it just so happens the same exact colors in this bomb as we see on this cup, leading us to the understanding of it is the cup of his indignation. Now the other thing we wanna show you is that yes, we are now in Joel chapter three. Okay, so Joel chapter 3 is certainly going to, uh, you know, come alive, hopefully, hopefully. Now, um, we saw the solar eclipse, okay, we saw the solar eclipse uh, taking place, and we can see that this solar eclipse is in uh, Joel chapter 3, and our brother Daniel, he was actually uh, recording it, and we also want to share that with you. Okay, so here's our brother Daniel. He have recorded the eclipse and he said he was using the glasses, you know, supposed to not supposed to look directly, you have to have the glasses and he used his um phone and he is recording the eclipse, the ring of fire. Amazing. So yes, this eclipse is coming at the sixth bowl. Okay? The eclipses Mark the seals, trumpets, and bowls precisely in intervals of six months. Now, the reason this is Joel chapter 3 is because it's followed by a lunar eclipse two weeks afterwards. So, a week from the time of this video recording, 
there will be a lunar eclipse. It's not a full lunar eclipse, which is called a blood moon. The reason it's Joel is Joel says the sun shall be darkened. The sun and moon shall be darkened. Okay, so that, uh, now he's got Joel chapter 2. It also talks about a lunar blood moon, but this is a partial lunar eclipse that's coming up. So this is actually Joel chapter 3, that this eclipse, the sun will be darkened, solar eclipse. Two weeks later, we have a lunar eclipse. So yes, that is what's happening precisely in Joel chapter 3. And we are very, very excited because it's one of the many, many confirmations that we are in Armageddon. Now, if you're unfamiliar with this channel and the message, we know that each eclipse is going to mark a seal, trumpet, or bowl. So here we are. The apocalypse is 14 years, and we are answering this the fulfillment of all the prophecy related to the sixth bowl. Sixth bowl is Armageddon, and you can see here there's an eight and a red circle, which means a lunar eclipse. Now, there are two diagrams like this. One is the first seven years of the tribulation, or, or the apocalypse, and then the last, which could be viewed as the great tribulation. All right, but if we look here, we can see that the order of the eclipses started in 2014 with the four blood moons, and then every six months, there's a different solar or lunar eclipse, and what it's doing is it's marking the seven seals, which you can see. Then it begins to mark the seven trumpets, okay, which you can see, and then it marks the seven bowls. So this particular eclipse is marking bowl number six, and then it's bowl number seven, and then it is, it is done. All right, now, when we look at Joel chapter 3, um, the thing that led us to Joel chapter 3, and knowing that this was the time we are presently in, for sure, is the Greeks. So, in our previous video, which we hope you watched, the Gaza War, we showed you how the Most High said he will raise up the sons of Zion against the sons of Greece. And it's a interesting statement. And we find this statement repeated in Joel chapter 3. So this is the principle of his word being fulfilled in prophecy, line upon line, precept upon precept. Okay? So that led us to the understanding here in Joel chapter 3 that this is also talking about the Gaza war. And once we have this proof, when we have this clear connection, we can clearly see that we are in Armageddon. That is what we're proving in this video. Uh, verse 6, The children of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have you sold to the Grecians. Okay? So this is uh, referring directly to he has raised up the sons of Zion against the sons of Greece. So this is Armageddon, and that's what we're going to show you and prove you that the details that are happening in Joel chapter 3 are Armageddon. They are happening now. You're living in it. This is the hour and time of his judgments. We also want to talk about the Valley of Jehoshaphat. It says, I will gather the nations and I'll bring them down into the Valley of Jehoshaphat and plead with them for my people and for their heritage Israel. So we see this expression, the Valley of Jehoshaphat. Very important for us to understand. It's also repeated in verse 12. Let the heathen be awakened and let them come to the valley of Jehoshaphat, for there will I sit to judge the heathen round about. Now, what is the valley of Jehoshaphat? It is actually the story of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah. We find this story in 2 Chronicles chapter 20. And in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, essentially what happens is Ammon and Moab, which is in modern day Jordan, um, they assemble a huge army in the valley um, uh, around the Dead Sea, and they begin to form uh, this alliance with Mount Seir to go into Jerusalem and to attack Judah. So what happens is Jehoshaphat cries unto the Most High, and 
he has given a, a prophetic word that don't be afraid, the Most High is with you. So what Jehoshaphat does is he actually um, uh, prays and, they, uh, and he goes forth. So the Most High says to go forth. Yahweh says, go forth, don't be afraid. So they assemble their army and they go into this valley. Now, when they go into this valley, they don't involve in any combat. They send the singers and the musician. The worship goes forth. And when the worship goes forth, the different armies begin to fight each other. And that's what happened in this valley. That's the story of what is the Valley of Jehoshaphat. So it is, the, um, it is when uh, the king of Judah, who was a righteous king, cried out to the Most High that he sent the singers and musicians, the worship, okay? And that's a song. We actually have a song that we uh, recorded as part of this. Rejoice, daughter of Zion, okay? So we have posted that. We'll have a link um, in the description field of the video. And this is the uh, great rejoicing because the king is coming on his white horse. So we should do the same thing. We should rejoice in this time. We should rejoice in this day. It says, rejoice, daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Your king comes lowly, righteous, on a colt. Okay, glory to his name. Remember, Scripture is understood and interpreted line upon line, precept upon precept. So we've already compared Amos chapter 1 and Zechariah chapter 9 to prove that this is the Gaza War. Now this Gaza War is Armageddon, and that's what we're very excited to share with you. And I really encourage you to share this, get this out. Um, this video will be posted on LelandJones.com, at which point you can find it on the different platforms, Vimeo and BitChute. But why is Armageddon the war in Gaza? Well, it's right here. We're here in Joel chapter 3. What you're looking at is on one side of the screen, we have King James, um, and the other side of the screen, we have the um, Greek Old Testament, the Apostolic Bible Polyglot. And we'll show you why there's uh, some reasons to use both, and we'll explain. But first off, verse 4. What have I to do with you, O Tyre and Zidon, and all the coast of Palestine? Okay, what is the war? It's Israel against the Palestinians. So this is talking about Palestinians, people from Palestine, the coast of Palestine. Now Tyre and Zidon, as we explained in the last video, that is southern Lebanon. So from the last video, we saw all the nations that would be part of this war. Just starts in Gaza, but then it spreads. And it spreads through the drunk nations. So do we see the drunk nations here in Joel chapter 3? Yes. Verse 3. They sold a girl for wine that they might drink. All right? So here we're getting the wine that they drink, okay, and Yahweh causes them to be drunken and to bring about the sword, okay? That's what it's talking about here. Verse 2, I'll gather all the nations and bring them into the valley of Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat, and plead with them there. Okay, they have cast lots for my people. They have given a boy for a harlot, okay? So this is the harlot. This is Mystery Babylon. They have sold wine that they might drink, and these are the drunk nations. Clearly, the nations it's specifically talking about is the coast of Palestine. This is the Gaza Strip, Tyre and Sidon. This is southern Lebanon. Okay? Um, now, the other thing is we also have... The children of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have you sold to the Grecians. Now, this is what we were explaining before, that this was our key to understand that this is fully connected with Zechariah 9. He will raise up the sons of Zion against the sons of the Greeks. Okay, So, um, here we can see that, yes, Yahweh will bring nations, the valley of Jehoshaphat, he brought Ammon, Moab, he brought the nations into a place of judgment, and he delivered uh, King Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, when they worship. So let's continue. We'll go to 
Um, Joel chapter 3, we'll continue on to verse uh, 7. All right. And actually verse 8. Um, they shall sell them to the Sabians to a people far off. Okay. So that means that there's going to be more refugees um, as a result of this war. Uh, it's just beginning. Proclaim this among the Gentiles or the nations. Prepare war. Wake up the mighty men. All right. Prepare war. Wake up the mighty men. Now, the reason, um, one of the reasons we're using um, the uh, Greek example here is because it has uh, slightly different wording and it has um, very insightful things as well that um, we can see here, especially here in, in this verse 9. Okay, let's actually go back to verse 6. In the sons of Judah, in the sons of Jerusalem, you render to the sons of the Greeks. Okay. So that's what we saw. He raised up the sons of Zion against the sons of the Greeks. All right. Now, the other verse we wanted to draw your attention to, proclaim these things among the nations. Okay. Sanctify a war. Sanctify a war. So that in the Greek here, we get the word sanctify. And hegiazo, this word means to make something holy. Or we could also say this is a holy war. And that is in Islam called jihad. It is a holy war when the Muslims go and make war with Israel. So there was a black flag raised over a mosque in Persia, in Iran, in a major mosque. And it's a very rare occasion of mourning, and it is also calling for jihad and the holy war. So that's what we can see when we read the Greek, is that verse 9 says, sanctify a war or a holy war. Sanctify means to make something holy. All right? Um, so that's a slightly different wording that we see in um, the King James Draw near, all right, beat your plowshares into swords and your perning hooks into spears. Uh, let the weak say, I am strong. Assemble yourselves, come all you heathen and gather yourselves together round about and cause the mighty ones to come down, O Lord. Let the heathen be awakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat, okay? So this is not just a physical place, but it's a, 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 a spiritual idea of the whole world coming and fighting the lamb. All right, that's what was happening to Jehoshaphat, king of Judah. That area was by the Dead Sea, and you had Ammon and Moab, which is in modern day Jordan, and they were coming over to take Jerusalem. Now, the other thing that happens here is we, we have the great harvest. So it says, put the sickle for the harvest is ripe. So this begins to connect Joel chapter 3 to Revelation 14 when we have two harvests. We have the wheat harvest, and that's what this is talking about. Put you the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Okay, that is the wheat harvest. There's a second harvest called the grape harvest. For the press is full and the vats overflow. Well, again, when we look at this, it makes it more clear in the Greek that the uh, press is a wine press, okay? Um, here it's in verse 13, send out your sickles for stands by the gathering of the crops. Enter in, tread for the wine vat is full, okay? And the wine vats overflow, okay? So that's uh, for the multitude that are evils. So that's the, the evil harvest of the grapes in Revelation 14. So this is actually saying, when you see these things come to pass, this is the time of the great harvest. All right? Amazing. You can see how exciting the times that we are living in as the prophecy continues to unfold. 
Now, as we go, we see multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. And amazingly enough, this word decision, okay, haras, it is also used when we search for it in Zechariah chapter 9 and Amos chapter 1. You see it right here? You get Joel 14, multitudes, multitudes, valley of decision. Okay, for three transgressions of Damascus, that's in Amos uh, chapter 1, and it's in Zechariah 9. Um, they leaped up silver as the dust and gold. So this word is actually translated gold in Zechariah. And let's see, what is it in Amos? Instruments of iron, okay? All right, so an interesting word, translated decision, means to uh, be decisive, to cut something, okay? In multitudes, multitudes, in the valley of decision, for the day of the Lord is near the valley, in the valley of decision, okay? That's this valley of decision, the valley of Jehoshaphat, all the nations, all right, are being gathered. Okay, and as we mentioned before, um, you know, the, the nations are being gathered to come against Jerusalem. Now, this day in value decision, it is marked by a solar eclipse and a lunar eclipse. That's what you can see in verse 15. The sun and the moon shall be darkened. Those are eclipses. The stars shall withdraw. They are shining. All right. The sun and moon shall be darkened. So we have a solar eclipse. Okay, that took place a week after the war in Gaza started. And then two weeks after that, we have a lunar eclipse. And this is marking the sixth bowl. So, yes, clearly what we see here is the connections to Zechariah chapter 9, the war in Gaza. Okay, and what happens is Yahweh assembles his army. Okay. It says in verse 16, the Lord shall roar out of Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem. Woo, this is it, man. He's on his white horse. He is coming. All right. The heavens and the earth shall shake, but Yahweh shall be a hope of his people and strength of his children at Israel. Okay. So the believers in the Lord Jesus Christ that are part of his army, all right, that are assembled around the Lord of hosts, all right, they're the ones dwelling in Zion. So you shall know that I am the Lord your God dwelling in Zion, my holy mountain. All right. So very, very um, exciting prophecy. Um, talks about the judgments on Egypt and Edom. All right, in verse 19. So we know Edom and Jordan will have a role in this war. Um, we know that it's Syria. Um, we could see from Jeremiah 25, Iraq is involved. So that's when the nations were drunk. Um, they are stirred to go to war. They are stirred by the events happening uh, to the Palestinians in the Gaza Strip. We had talked about in the other video the specific cities, and we saw events happening in those specific cities when the war broke out. But we have, um, you know, the cusp of the Israel doing a, a ground invasion into Gaza. So this is going to stir more nations. It's going to bring out more and more things. Um, this is Armageddon, guys. This is the day of the Lord. Repent. The kingdom of God is at hand. All right, here we go. This is the major escalation we are watching for in the Sixth Bowl, Armageddon, the war in Gaza. Okay, guys, what we seek to do... Is